Boeing achieved true long-haul prominence in the 1970s when its iconic 747 family took to the skies. It changed long-distance travel forever. But Boeing found that it needed to complement the 747 with a smaller, wide-body design. This eventually saw the development of the Twinjet 767. Let's take a look at the life of the 767 program. Before we go any further, a crazy 79% of you have not yet subscribed. Please, do us a favor and subscribe now. It really means a lot. You can trace the route to the Boeing 767 family back as far as 1972, just a couple of years after the original 747 entered service. After the 747, Boeing soon began developing a smaller aircraft that would retain its twin-aisle cabin design but for a lower capacity market than the 747. Codenamed the 7X7, the jet would be smaller than the Lockheed L-1011 and the McDonnell Douglas DC-10. Coincidentally, 1972 also saw the newly formed Airbus conglomerate launch the A300, a twin-engine widebody which would compete with the 767. Since its maiden flight in 1981, Boeing has since gone on to produce more than 1,200 767s across all variants. These include the original 767-200, as well as the Dash 200ER, Dash 300, Dash 300ER, and Dash 400ER. The 767-300 also formed the basis for the type's first cargo variant, which entered service with UPS in 1995. Boeing briefly offered an even bigger range 767-400ERX version in 2000, but cancelled it the next year. Interestingly, it never produced a standard 767-400. US carriers first operated the 767 on transcontinental and other domestic routes. Indeed, United first flew the aircraft between Chicago and Denver. In addition to their increased capacity over single-aisle designs, the 767's twin-aisle cabin also helped it to achieve faster boarding times. This subsequently led to higher dispatch reliability and general improvements in operational smoothness. The advent of ETOPS, otherwise known as Extended Range Twin Engine Operations Performance Standards, led to a boom in twinjet operations on intercontinental journeys such as transatlantic services. In recent years, however, the 767 has been in decline. Of course, a factor in this is the aircraft's age, with the original 767-200 having first flown nearly four decades ago. Unlike the 737, Boeing has not developed a next-generation version of the 767. Another partial factor in the 767's decline is its own success that spurred Boeing to develop the larger 777. Most recently, however, is Boeing's launch of the 787 Dreamliner family. This nine abreast design is smaller than the 777 series, putting it on a par, capacity-wise, with some of the 767's larger variants. Since its introduction in 2011, many airlines have ordered the 787 as a replacement for the 767 due to its greater range and efficiency, further contributing to the 767's fall in the last decade. Although, as we have established, the 767 has been superseded by the likes of the 777 and 787 families, this is primarily the case in the passenger-carrying domain. In terms of cargo, the aircraft still has an important role to play. Boeing is reportedly producing a handful of 767 freighters a month. Boeing continues to see strong market demand for 767 airplanes, which offer outstanding operational efficiency and payload configuration. Cargo operators around the world keep the global 767 freighter fleet busy, flying the model an average of 10 hours a day. Boeing still has 97 outstanding orders for the jet, with more than a third of these going to FedEx. Interestingly, 57 of the outstanding orders are for air tanker companies, showing that in the domain of air-to-air -air refueling, the 767 remains a versatile aircraft. What are your memories of flying on the Boeing 767? Do you have a favorite variant of the type? Share your thoughts and experiences by leaving a comment. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.